Why, hello there, everybody. I genuinely couldn't find like a good angle to have this work with my glasses. So pretty much we're just going to be going no glasses and hopefully I can see everything. They adjust pretty quickly, so I should be fine. For this draft, our team will be based off potential. So the first line is going to be all elite. It doesn't matter if it is high elite, doesn't matter if it is exact elite, so on and so forth. It just matters that it is elite. Our second line will be top six forward, and then we will have top nine forward. And then I'm assuming that our fourth line will just be like fourth line. What is that now? I don't know, like bottom six, I guess. So let's get after it here. Randomize the team. No, not exactly. We will be drafting for the jerks again. Why do we get the same teams over and over? I will never know. My neighbor also just conveniently happened to be mowing the lawn at the exact time I wanted to record, so big fan of that. Owner mode will be off, fantasy draft will be on, jabroni will of course be deleted. Fog of war, no, no. I think we're just gonna go with these three. No, not even CPU trades because I'm not gonna trade either. It's a draft. I like those rules, okay? You can't trade if it's a draft. We wanna see how the team does. Hopefully this microphone is like semi noise canceling so that way we don't really hear the lawnmower that much. I know sometimes I got laundry going. This channel's a mess, guys. We are going to be drafting at pick number five. Got an early one. I was very close. Pick number three. Now, can I do a franchise player, or are we going specifically elite? Because if we're going for specifically elite, then, you know, I could take one of these guys, I guess. Just because the comment specifically says first line equals elite, I'm going to not bend the rules at all, okay? I'm going to go right off of what it says, so I will take Roman Yossi first. I mean, he's a great defender, don't get me wrong. But, first line, left wing, medium, elite, Philip Forsberg. Boom, join the team. I'm kind of hoping that Will Nye is still there. And then I will have... No, he is not. I will, however, take Mika Zibanejad, who's got the low elite, 89 overall, to be our first line center. We've got some good abilities going here, but that is going to tail off real quick. Oh, I want to get Joe Pavelski for that first line. It's got to be a plus five, right? Okay, and we have... A defenseman who is elite, and then we'll be top four, top six. So I need another elite defenseman, which means I'm probably going to go with one of these two. Yossi is left-handed? Yes. Okay, that works out great because these guys are both right-handed. He's got abilities. I'm going with Latang. Zach Hyman is a top six forward, would be very solid for the second line. I really got to hope that there's enough top six forwards here. Okay, so I'm going to try to knock it out now, Hyman. And then I think I'm going to take Pavelski next just because... You never know, maybe someone will take him soon. So there you go, our first line is done. Finally, a top six forward that isn't making $10 billion. This will mean that we have two left wingers, but I don't care. Duclair is joining our squad. I'm gonna draft him for as long as I can, which is basically the rest of this game. David Krejci, top six forward. The GOAT will be our second line center. If you know, you know. Yep, definitely drop the ball here. Forgot all about goalies. Mm, Mark andre Fleury? Actually, you know what? Because goalies have, like, starter, I think I'm going to try to avoid elite in this instance. So I'm going to try to go with a starter, and then the backup will have to be a backup. On that note, I will be drafting number 70, Karel. I don't even know how to pronounce his last name properly. I call him Vamelka, even though that's most likely incorrect. Too bad. On our team anyway. No, he's not. Never mind. I don't like when that happens. Run it back. Vamelka joining the team. There we go. $32 million. We got a top nine forward right here in Connor Brown. He'd be very solid for the third line. So, uh, yeah. I do need top four defensemen because right now we've only got that first pair. So, Zach Whitecloud will be optimal at 2.7. I'm thinking, more so hoping, that for goalies we should be able to get a backup goalie Pretty much, like, last pick of the draft. There you go. Braden McNabb can play with White Cloud. No problem. Actually, yeah, he's right-handed. So, boom. There you go. Top four defender. And now we just need our two top six defenders. Rust is listed as a top nine, but I just can't with 5.1. It's not possible right now. We only have 23 mil left. It would put us in a tricky situation. Barabanov, however. 2.5 million. Yeah. And he shoots left. So, you know, can put him left or right side. It doesn't matter. Top nine forward, Lars Eller. 
We need a centerman for that line, I think. I haven't even really double-checked anything, to be honest with you, so I could be 1,000% wrong. But I'm going to double down and just assume I'm right. Lars Eller joining the jerks. I'm not going to lie to you, did not expect the draft to go this quick. So all we need now is some bottom six forwards, which, you know, we should be able to get. Some top six defenders and a backup netminder. Very decent. The Intimidator Luke Shen listed as a top six defenseman. That is just a gimme. Typically, I don't like pairing a defensive defenseman with a defensive defenseman, but I will make the exception here. Carson, six foot five, four star physicality, will also be joining the Carolina Hurricanes roster. So we are really getting down there now. Just need our fourth line, our backup goalie, and we are winning that Stanley Cup. Maybe. Maybe we're winning that Stanley Cup. 16 million left. Yeah, that works. Okay, so we'll take Oscar Sundqvist. Only 74 face-offs. What can you do? 2.7. And he's a bottom six forward, which is exactly what we're looking for. Good thing I came to look at goalies because backup is actually not that easy to find. But we've got Alex to save the day. He is a high backup goaltender. Boom. Bottom six forward. Barkley Goudreau is a grinder, I believe. Yep, perfect. Sweet. Okay, this has been... Honestly, way easier than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why, but when I first saw the comment, I was like, I want to do this, but it's going to take a while. No. And we got two bottom six forwards here. I'm going to go with Garnett, another grinder, to really add some grit to this team on that fourth line. Beautiful. Okay, I am extremely happy with how this team turned out. Let's go ahead, sim the entire draft. We didn't get Nate Mack or, you know, any of the other 32 people in front of Roman Yossi. But, I'm still very satisfied. I believe we got two two-way forwards in Forsberg and Pavelski playing with Zibanejad, who's a sniper. So that probably works. All right, let's go put these lines together. Well, before we do that, I'm going to simulate to the regular season. Because there's no point in doing it before that. We're just going to have to do it either way. So let's go. Show me the plus five on that first line. What is up with that? No. Jabroni, stay out of it. Boom. There we go. Plus five. Christ, he's supposed to be up here. So it'll be like that. Duclair is right slash left. And so is he. And he shoots right. Okay. So this is already turning out very nice. Now, who are we missing? Goudreau's supposed to come down here. Yankowski. Let's go to the scratched players. Eller. Ah, okay. Boom. You are in. You'll be playing in the middle of... Yeah, Barabanov shoots left, so I think that makes more sense. And then we have Sunkvist playing with Hathaway and Goudreau. So let me just fact check this real quick. Elite, elite, boom. Yep, top six. Wait, what? No, 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 no. That is cap. That's cap. I swear when I drafted him, it said top six. Can we please run it back? Zach Hyman is a top six forward, would be very solid for the second line. What is this? Connor Brown is now a top... No. No. I definitely did not have Fog of War on. Is... I... I don't have words. Okay, that is not on me. Because I drafted what I saw. And then it just went and changed up on me. So... Sorry. Anyway, let's check out our defense that are also probably not their correct potentials. What a thing of beauty that is right there. One, two, one. So we got the two elites here. Yep. And then top four. Of course. Of course they're top four. I'm pretty sure that that is based on like the rest of the league or something like that. No, that's normally the role, not the potential. So I don't have anything. I am completely lost. If you guys have any idea, let me know. But I think we just got to run with it because I made sure when I was drafting them that they were that potential so even lion is listed as a fringe starter now well let's start the sim i guess actually before we do that i'm gonna say we get 45 wins 44 wins make the playoffs so Benajai gets the most points with 80 let's go okay the boys are cooking that's not good that is good let's keep it rolling here we got the aisles oh dear big win against the caps Ooh. We can't really pull away. We keep getting a few wins and then losing the same. We are currently first in the division, though. 
So can't be too upset about that. We definitely seem like a playoff bound team. That can change. You know, the post trade deadline can change anybody. But the way we're sitting right now, I think we are absolutely destined for the lofts and hopefully a fairly decent run in the lofts. Sheldon got the boot. Hate to see it, but I'm going to keep simming. How many wins are we going to be at for the trade deadline? If we're above 35, that is really good. And we have a great chance of being there. Two more games. There it is. We're at 36. Let's go ahead, keep the block, but enter the deadline just to see who's there. Even though no trades are on. So probably nothing special. Well, there's, you know, quite a few good players here. I don't want to slow down our momentum though. So I'm going to keep going right away. Hopefully, we can maybe even win the President's Trophy, to be honest. If we keep going like this, we stand a legitimate chance. And as I say that, we now go on a five-game losing streak. Incredible scene. We're gonna get more wins than I predicted, though, or at least we should. Don't you dare. Okay, nice. Got the win there against Detroit. Another one against Florida, which is good enough for 46 on the season. Pardon me? The Islanders finished 9-0-1. We're in one here, lads. We finished second in the Metro with 99 points. The Jackets at 106. They might be President's Trophy winners. No, they are not. The Winnipeg Jets take that title. They had Matthews playing with Verona and Ovi. Ooh, Matthews and Ovi together. They probably, one of them, I should say, won the Rocket Richard. Kata Hot in net. Miller Hronik, yeah. Good team. The 21st placed Boston Bruins qualify. Again, that's not crazy compared to what we've seen recently. The Flyers finished last. They had Barzal playing with Stone and Formington. Interesting. Demko and Lukanen in net. They also had Hedman. Mm, yeah, you know what? I can kind of see why they did bad, but also I feel like they don't have... A terrible team. Forsberg and Pavelski leading the charge. All right, 71 apiece. We got a nice amount of points from Zabenejad. Krejci put up 64. What a beautician. 54 from Hyman. Duclair couldn't reach 50. Neither could Latang. One shy. Our goalies did well though. 917 and four shutouts from Carell. 34, 19, and five as well. Lion had a 9 10, 277. That's great for a backup. Gibson would lead the league with 40 wins, however. He also had a 921 save percentage, so he did extremely well. He only had two shutouts, though. Apparently, I should have gone with Fleury because he got six shutouts and a 917. How you doing? Quinn Hughes leads defenseman almost point a game. He had 10 more points than our top point getter. Fox had 77, Riley 76, EK65 is up there. It would be Lindholm taking home the Art Ross. How about that? 101. And I see 43 goals apiece, but what do I see down here with Pasta? That is a Rocket Richard winning season, if I've ever seen one, in this game anyway. Marchand also got 50. All right, just for fun, who got the best plus minus? Shifley, Skinner, and Verona all got plus 38. Most penalty minutes went to Tanner. Because, obviously, he also had the most Tillies. Is anybody surprised? No, I didn't think so. It is playoff time. Let's see what the Isles have in store for us. Go to the view line screen. It might be faster to go this way. Maybe not. Boom. We've got Brady Kachuk. So, first of all, right away I noticed not a lot of abilities. Right away I noticed this fourth line. Okay? I'm liking our chances here. They gotta have, like, Vasilevsky or something, no? Jake Sanderson and McAvoy. All right. Not great there either. Confusion? The Isles coach better win the Jack Adams because that is insane. Let's sim pass the first three. Not a good start. We're already down. Oh my. Okay. We won one. Can we make it a best of three? Yes, we can. Beautiful. Who gets the advantage? Nice. Don't let them push seven. They did it. Here we go. Start the simulation. Let's go by the times eight speed. Right away, we give them a power play. Kill it off. Not a big deal. Special teams. I was just hyping you guys up. Okay, there we go. Duclair gets one. That will tie this thing up at one. And it looks like we will be headed into the second. All knotted up. Power play. Nice. Hyman scores on Vanacek. It is a 2-1 lead for the Jerks. 
We give them a power play now. The longest power play I've ever seen, and we managed to kill it off. It also went to a five on three, and we still got it. So, beautiful from the Hurricane Squadron. And it all comes down to this. Will we be done for round one, or will we be moving on to the conference semifinals? Arvidsson not letting his team go down without a fight. Hyman again. Let's go. All right, that's huge. 3-2. Five minutes remaining. Come on. Yeah, Zafinijad clutching up. That will do it. There's no way they come back from that. We are moving on. Zach Hyman, you literal beautician. And then Carell, 923. Very proud of you as well. Next up, it is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's him pass the first three yet again here. All right. Not good. But we've been here before. We haven't been here though. Oh, I just realized I didn't look at their roster. That's why we're getting dummied, obviously. So that's on me. Kind of forgot to do that. That's sort of a new thing that I've been doing. Hopefully we can win this game and I can go see what's going on in Columbus. We were out shooting them pretty heavily, but they came back and now the shots are approaching even. Still no goals though. Okay. All right. Forget I was saying anything. Lindholm literally just said, hey, um, there is a goal and I got it. So zip it. Okay. And then we get scored on by... Oh, sure. Join the party, Landy. Not a great game from Carell. I'm going to say that. We got some depth goal scoring. Barkley buries one. It's 4-1. Not going to say this game's over yet. I'm also not going to say that we stand a chance, though. Extended power play. All right, we tried. I will still go look at Columbus's lines, even though, you know, what's the point, really? And we kind of just saw their team. But, yeah, we'll go... Have a quick little peek. The Columbus Blue Jackets. Wow. They have Landy, Barkov, and Lucas Raymond. And then they've got Giroux, Burtz, and Dubé. Boone Jenner on the third line. Yeah, okay. So you know what? I don't feel too bad about this loss. They do have a very solid team. Kachekov literally stole the show in that one as well. He had a 970 or something. GG, no re. Let's find out who wins the ultimate prize. Will it be Columbus? Or will it be somebody else? With that roster, I think they stand a pretty good chance. But maybe somebody has a better roster and we're about to find out. Columbus does not win it. It goes to Colorado. They finished 12th in the entire league with 94 points. What do they have here? They got Horvat, Rantanen, and Patches. Okay. Clayton Keller, Maximus, and Toffoli. Mm-hmm. Mackenzie Wieger playing with the Yeti. Petrie and Ghost. Yeah, okay. Ryan O'Reilly on the third line. Hello? I feel like our first line kind of let us down. Forsberg had six points in 12 playoff games. So, yeah, that's not good. Mika had 10. Thank you. At least he kind of carried his weight. Connor Brown, who was a third liner, got nine points. Pavelski got eight, which isn't bad. Barabanov got eight. Yossi was seven. Yeah, I guess our uh, top guys just really, well... They did okay, but, you know, I think you would expect more from them. Carell has pretty decent numbers. 285 GAA definitely cannot put the blame on him. Barlamov did exceptional. 933 save percentage. Gibson had a 925. Jari was up there, 917. Okay, so definitely this guy right here stole the show. He even had a sub-2 goals against average. That's nuts. Gerard had 18 points in 25 games. Hamilton had 17 points in 25. Philip Ronick had 15 points in just 12 games. Now that's impressive. Leon Dreisaitl did very well. Pedersen had 26 points in 18 games. His team did not win the Stanley Cup, however. Okay, who had the most points for Colorado? Are you trying to tell me that Jonathan Taze is about to win the Conn Smythe. I once again feel like this is an optimal time to give the Conn Smythe to a goalie. But will they do it? Probably not. Go through the team awards real quick here. Individual trophies. Lindholm does not get the Art Heart combo because Matthews ends up with the heart. Quinn Hughes gets the Norris. No surprise there. Lady Bing will go to Lindholm. Matthias with the Calder. 
He really has been winning that like every sim. Jonathan Taze with the Con Smythe. How about that? Gibson gets the Vesna. Thompson with the Jennings. Radko Gudis takes home the Masterton. Cortnell gets the Jack Adams. I would have to look at Detroit's roster, but I still think that 9-0-1 finish from the Isles to make the playoffs is insane. Crosby gets the Selkie. Matthews with the Ted Lindsay and Pasta, as we saw. 54 Tucks gets the Rocket Richard. Your playoff tree went as such. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for the draft idea. It ended up being, honestly, not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I don't know why the potentials changed once we came into the game, but... I don't know what to do beyond that. You can't really predict what it's going to turn into. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Hope you had a great time. If you have other draft ideas, be sure to let me know. If you could leave a like, that would be insane. Like, literally insane. It would be like going bar south for a Stanley Cup winning goal. I'm just saying. I promise you it would not be like that at all. But anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you soon.